Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Grand Strand Nissan in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm about to pass out. I'm actually standing right here in front of a 2016 Nissan GTR Premium. And uh, this is also known as Godzilla. This is a very interesting car. Uh, it is like a handmade car in Japan, and um, it has actually a three page disclaimer explaining that this is not a normal car it has tons of horsepower it makes weird noises has a special transmission the, the tires need certain uh, attention the uh, brakes need certain attention um, so it does come with a three page disclaimer on that and I'll, I'll show you a picture of that as well but just I mean the styling the quality of this vehicle is just absolutely stunning so let's check out here in the front it has a projector LED system and you can see it has three uh, projector tubes with LEDs powering those you also have the LED running lights down here they're on the front You've got the GTR emblem here in the front grille. And then you've got all that cooling space there. This is a 3.8 liter V6 twin turbo engine, which I will show you before the video is over with. There's some where the air goes in <laughs> is the simple uh, explanation there. It's like an induction system. It has six piston Brembo, Brembo uh, calipers here in the front with cross drill. I don't know if you can see that cross drill uh, disc brakes there in the middle. ventilation between the discs I mean those discs have to be they look like they're like an inch and a half wide I've never seen any that wide but hopefully you can see in the video how wide they are maybe up here but yeah it's amazing um, just every every little thing about this car is just staggering got your GTR emblem there and this right here is open I guess that's for uh, airflow for the um, for cooling or, or something there aerodynamics I'm not really sure this is the first time I've ever seen a GTR in person so I hope I'm doing it justice if there's anything you can add in the comments please do there's the four piston Brembo caliper here in the back and you've got the uh, really good sized um, uh, uh, this brake and it is it does have the uh, the cooling vents there in the center uh, some cars have a just a solid disc in the back this one has a, a massive um, a cooling system for the brake and one thing you'll notice that this thing makes some weird noises I don't know if you can hear that but uh, you know while it's running it does kind of have a little bit of noises here and there uh, has a very loud fan has like rattling sounds and stuff like that and I was assured that that was all part that all it's all normal for this particular vehicle it even has that in the disclaimer in the vehicle so looking in the back here you see it's got the spoiler and I like the way it's kind of it's kind of raised up here and it attaches only on, on the uh, on the trunk lid you see it's got a 
got massive pipes here coming out of the back. And we've got the carbon fiber piece there. And the tail lights had the LEDs in them. So you've got the LED rings. I would love to eventually, hopefully, uh, do a vi uh, video on this car at night because I'm very curious to see what it looks like at nighttime. All right, one of the cool things about this car is, I'm assuming this is for aerodynamics, but the handle is flush with the car. There's no, uh, it's not sticking out. And um, according to what I've read, handles do uh, create a significant amount of drag as well as the side mirrors. So this one is, is flush. Now to open it, you just push this right here and it pops out. And then that way you can get in the vehicle. But let me go ahead and show you the passenger side first. All right, here's the inside of the passenger door. And you've got like a leather stitched everything very soft. This is like a pillow soft uh, down here. Um, it feels like a leather or a fake leather there. Leather here on the handle. And then you've got, this is actually the, the door handle there to open up the door. And then you've got the power window and your door locks there. And then you've got a carpeting down in this area. And there's like a net pocket here. You hear those noises? premium Bose sound system in this vehicle. There's the GTR badge there in the threshold. And I wonder if this is illuminated. It probably is. That's pretty neat. Now the seat has, they are heated seats. There's the controls for that. And I like the way this works. You can go like that to move the seat forward, back. Um, let's see here. You can twist it to move the back there. Kind of just twist it like that. This is pretty neat. It's not really going up and down, but it goes all the other directions. It also has the uh, little handles here to in order to get in the back seat. Now the back seats, not a lot of leg room there when the seats, the front seats, all the way back. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, the back seats are pretty large actually. I was kind of surprised at that. There's that disclosure form I was telling you about. You've got a cup holder there. You also got some speakers in the back, the Bose, I guess, kind of like subwoofer type speakers or mids. Let's take a look at the glove compartment. There's the owner's manual and all that. It is a felt lined glove compartment. You do have a like a leather, um, uh, let's see here, leather on this side, and this it does have the perforations here. But then here is the uh, is a suede soft leather, is what it feels like, or a cloth. Let's see if I can tell. Kind of like feels like a cloth, um, or a really soft suede. But then the outside is a leather. seeing something here and I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a little place for your tools. That's pretty neat. Let's take a look at it here. Alright, so let's go ahead and before we get in the driver's seat, Let's take a look at the trunk, which I was very surprised at the room in the trunk. Now there's the key there. It says GTR on it. And uh, this this one has, you can open up the trunk, you can lock and unlock. I don't see any remote start or anything like that on this particular vehicle. And I'm not sure if it's available, but um, there's the key there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this and open up the trunk. And it may not open with the vehicle running. So I have to get back to that. Let's see if there's a button here. 
Yes. All right, so it's open now. All right. So there's that. So in here is really deep. I mean, it goes down in here pretty far. And for a two-door sports car slash supercar, uh, this has a significant a trunk. I was really surprised that they even bothered to have a trunk in a vehicle like this. But um, I guess it does serve to raise the back, which helps out with the aerodynamics. And it also is an empty space, so there's no weight here. So um, it makes sense, but I was just very surprised at first. And I guess you got a place there for the uh, ventilation for the subwoofer speakers there. You got the carpet line on the trunk lid. Of course, this little thing is for um, somebody who's trapped in the trunk. They can pull that and escape the trunk. So make sure you uh, keep that in mind if you're ever stuck in a trunk of a GTR. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the passage uh, the driver's side door. Basically a mirror of the passenger except for the, uh, the addition of the, uh, the window there, the window control for the passenger. It's a little bit different for a door lock. And I notice it has this bolt sticking out, which will secure the door. I guess that's an additional safety feature um, on this vehicle to make it more solid. Got the GTR symbol there, edge, and let's see what we got here. This is to raise and lower the front of the seat. This button here, which you do not have on the passenger side, you do have the there's the heated seat, and then there's the power seat button here. That's where you can adjust it, like so. All right, let's get a view from the back seat on this side. The seats, actually, where you sit, are very wide, like very big, but the the, the legroom is kind of lacking there. Which, uh, you know, the seat is all the way back, and also uh, it is kind of that's the way it is with sports cars. All right, I'm gonna hop in, and. See if we got I got the air conditioner on here because of the it is pretty warm today. And I don't want to sweat in this vehicle. Wow. Sometimes it just hits you like wow, I'm actually sitting in a GTR. <laughs> but anyways. 2016 GTR. All right, so basically your side mirrors, you can adjust them with this little joystick. You just have to choose uh, one side or the other, and then you can adjust them. This button, right to the to the right of it, uh, you can fold in. It's a power folding side mirrors. So um, so basically, when we were exiting the dealership through those doors, uh, the um, the salesman actually used that button to close to, to move in the side mirror, so he, you know, was able to squeeze through the dealership door um, easier. So and then you can just push it like that to open them back up. Pretty cool feature. All right, so here on the steering wheel, it is a leather wrapped with some some slight perforations there on the steering wheel. You can see the little dimples, I guess, more than. Uh, perforations. It is a round bottom steering wheel and it has the the grips here. Everything is kind of like a matte black. Nothing shiny going on right there. And most of the vehicle seems like it's mostly a, a, a matte black or a dull black. So you've got your cruise control buttons here on the right and um, and basically you've got you know you can on and off cancel and then you can uh, set and you know accelerate or deaccelerate all right and these buttons here this is pretty cool and um, this vehicle has a 
stopwatch. So basically, you can, um, as you're as you're driving, if you want to, you know, calculate how long it takes you to pass a certain building to another stoplight or whatever, um, you can you can push the stopwatch there and start it, stop it, and you know, that's pretty cool. So that's what these buttons are for here. But um, <laughs> that's one of the one of the many features of this vehicle. Now on this side, you've got a source. Um, basically, the source is AM, FM. FM2 satellite radio that kind of stuff and you got a volume and I'm sorry if I'm not holding the camera sometimes directly be a little bit excited so um, uh, anyways so source and then you got your volume here uh, you can see through the stations and once you pair your your phone with the Bluetooth system you can um, you know send and receive calls with this button here this button is for uh, voice recognition so you can push that button and um, you know say turn to a certain station or go to a specific address in the navigation and yes it does have navigation so on the back or behind the steering wheel rather you've got these big paddle shifters and they have like a a um, leather uh, wrapping around the outside so when you touch them they're really smooth feeling so um, you can actually slide your hand on the back there and, and as you're driving and you know correcting your, your steering. So in the paddle shifters, it's basically you know cycle through the gears. You can change gears with the paddle shifters. That's basically what they're for. Windshield wipers are on that side. Your headlight controls are on that side. It does have an automatic function. Uh, your dimmer switch is here. Your trip reset is right here. And here's your gauges. Now, one thing that kind of stuns me looking at these gauges is look at the speedometer. The speedometer has zero all the way down, like nor in a not a normal place, because there has to be so much room to this to go wrap around all the way to that 220 mile per hour um, top speed there. So. That was kind of interesting when I first got in the vehicle. It's like, wow, the whole time you're driving, you're probably never going to go. Uh, it's basically just going to kind of swing like a pendulum and never get past a certain here. Because look at all this hot top speeds. You would have to be on some kind of uh, off-road condition in order to um, to reach those speeds. And then there's your RPMs there. And look at it doesn't even redline until seven or eight. That's crazy. Um, super high revving engine here showing us in park now the reason why that P is so big is because when you cycle through the gears uh, you want to be able to as you're going at high speeds keep an eye on the gear you're in um, so that way with your paddle shifters you can shift through the gears and you can you can almost peripheral vision look at that um, that place there on the steering wheel and see which gear you're in at the time and then you got your temperature and then you have your uh, your gas gauge there All right, so over here, zoom back out. Over here, you've got your touch screen, and it is a pretty adequate size touch screen. Um, now, one of the things, let me just let me just go through some stuff here. I was in the stopwatch setting. Now, let me just cycle through the normal stuff. Uh, so, like your navigation map is here. You do have a um, different route that you can put in, like a particular address, that kind of stuff destination um, there's some information about the vehicle fuel economy tire pressure maintenance where am I <laughs> so um, and then you've got your you know, weather and traffic and stuff like that and map update so um, I'm gonna just hit tire pressure and just kind of see what it says it's showing 37 39 36 so I guess it's uh, in that range there so I'm gonna hit the back button here to go back out of that and let's go to uh, maintenance and see what that says. All right, so the engine oil. Uh, I guess you've got plenty of time to change the oil. I'm not sure, I guess these are increments in which you were to change the oil. And the oil filter would be changed at those increments. Um, uh, tires, I guess they would have to be changed at those increments there. 
so uh, it's a pretty interesting system there as far as the maintenance and it does mention that in the disclaimer um, On the disclaimer, uh, basically, it it um, explains that you know there, this is a high maintenance vehicle. Basically, is what it says. But anyways, um, it says it a little bit better than that, that way than that. So I'm just gonna kind of push. Uh, let's say destination info. So we got phone right here. So it's gonna ask me if I want a pair. Or no. Um, so it's just gonna get out of that. So over here is a little something a little bit different here. Um, this is. So I can go to function button, and this is gonna take me back to that screen where I was at before, where it has a stopwatch. But I can use this little knob here to turn, and it goes into different screens. So like this screen is a custom view, view five, and I'm sure you can customize it a little bit more than, you know, however you want. But, um, so you've got your boost for your turbos, uh, acceleration pedal, how far down it is, if you're 80% or whatever. I've never seen that on a vehicle before. Uh, your steering, I'm going to turn the steering wheel now so you can see, you know, it gives you an idea of where your steering is aimed, your miles per hour, uh, your torque, whether it's split between the all-wheel drive or the real-wheel drive. I don't know if my camera's um, getting a little dim there on the screen, so hopefully you'll be able to see. And then you've got cornering, I guess the lean of the car. So like say if you're going around a curve, it leans. So it kind of gives you an idea of, um, so right now we're completely level center. Cornering G's. So now I'm going to scroll to the next custom view. And you can see it has the transmission oil temperature, the boost, engine oil pressure, uh, the brake pedal, which I had my foot on the brake. I'm gonna push it harder. Wow, that's pretty neat. It measures the, the pressure on the pedal clock all right I'm gonna scroll again and this is the the uh, g-forces uh, on the vehicle so um, you got the acceleration G's right there and then you've got the cornering G's and the uh, acceleration and braking so um, as you're going forward it's gonna you know it's gonna go one way and as you stop it's gonna go the other and it'll give you the readouts on that that is absolutely amazing So I'm going to scroll again, and this gives me a big gauge here on the coolant temperature, and then engine oil temperature and engine oil pressure. Scrolling again to the first one, it gives me a big gauge of the boost for the turbo, and then uh, engine oil temperature and engine oil pressure. So I'm assuming that you can customize these, customize these screens, considering it says custom view one. Um, and then that way you can kind of tailor it to the information you need. Let's say you're in a hot environment and you're really pushing the vehicle really hard in a race or something. You can um, basically, you know, put a big, big uh, temperature like on that one screen where it had the temperature. Yeah, the coolant temperature. And that way you can really focus on that um, over the other things. So that's kind of an overview of the touchscreen and navigation, and but it has some really cool features that I've never seen in any other vehicle. Um, so I guess that's what makes it one of the reasons why it's a GTR. So and you can see here it's got the carbon fiber background here, and this is your radio, your volume control, um, you know AM FM satellite. Uh, it does have a CD player, which I'm kind of surprised, but it does have one on a 2016. And you can tune through the stations there. These numbers here are your presets. Climate control here. Uh, I do have the air conditioning on because it's kind of a warm day. It is a dual zone, so your driver and passenger are separate. This is the driver. There's the passenger. You do have rear defrost. Um, you can have air going, it's recirculating or wherever you want. Uh, this is the front defrost. Now these buttons down here, so, um, basically, let's see here, the shocks, if you want, if you want the, uh, it explains in the manual that if you want a, this is for your shocks, if you want a comfortable ride, you click that. If you want a sporty ride, you go there. Um, if you want your traction control kind of stability, like if you want to be able to spin tires, you notice it has a little icon there. If you want to spin tires, you can go ahead and turn the stability control off and um, it'll, it'll display off and then that way you know you can spin tires or do donuts or whatever you want to do. And uh, this is, um, I'm not 100% on that. I'd have to um, 
get back with you on that on that particular how that works I don't really know um, so maybe if you do if you know you can leave it in the comments I'd really appreciate it all right there's your CD player and then you've got the this the Bose little plaque badge right there which is pretty awesome here's your shifter and the shifter uh, basically you push this down and you go to reverse like that you notice it snaps over to the right and um, when I put it in reverse the backup camera pops up here so you got a nice wide angle view of the backup camera to avoid hitting anything and uh, continuing on there's neutral and there's automatic and then there's manual So once you're in manual mode, and it's showing right here, um, so again, okay, cycle to automatic, pushing to the right, cycles it back and forth. Manual, automatic, I'm just pushing it to the right, that's it. And I'm assuming that when you have it in manual mode, you can use the paddle shifters, and I don't know if it's going to limit you on the gears that it's going to go in and out of. Uh, some vehicles will, you can only go so, so far with it. Um, I'm going to hit the plus just to see. Yeah, it's not going to let me go into the next gear right now because I'm still just flashes at me. So there is a little bit of limitation. Probably for very good reason. So it's not really um, limiting you for um, anything arbitrary. So anyways, let me go ahead and put it back in park. Like so. And there's the big shiny candy-like start button right there. That's the one that you use to turn it on. Turn it on. Now you do have to be in the vehicle. You do have the key. Have to have the key on you, and you also have to um, push the brake pedal. You push that, and it starts up. Uh, one of the things one of the salespeople mentioned to me is that you want to leave it running for at least two minutes once you start it before you turn it off. It, I guess the vehicle goes through a particular cycle, and um, so that way you can allow the the vehicle to cycle through that um, that cycle before you turn it off. You do have some cup holders. Um, one is a little bit deeper than the other. I don't know if you can see that, this is a little shallow. I'm not sure what these little inserts are, but you can see one is a little bit deeper than the other. And it does, this closes up, and that way it covers up your, um, your cup holders. There's your emergency brake, parking brake there. And it is up in the up position now. And I lower it so you can see that's the lower position so that's the upper position right here is a center console basically an armrest um, on top there and then you open it up and then you have um, a, a felt lined little pocket there you do have a power supply as well as a USB port for charging and I'm assuming, I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming you can play music through the sound system with that uh, USB. Alright, you can see the pedals hopefully down there. They do have the bright ones. Um, this one has like a protective coating on it. Uh, but it is like a silver color, not a blue. And you do have like a rubberish, um, rubber sticking up from the pedal so that way you get a good firm grip on the pedal when you push it. You also have, which I think is a must in every vehicle, a little place to put your left foot right there. Even with a manual transmission, you cycle through the clutch, but also I think it's very important to me anyway to have a, a, a nice comfortable place to put your left foot while you're driving, especially long distances. So another thing I noticed uh, in this vehicle is the seats are very comfortable. They they wrap around you, but they're not too intrusive. Sometimes the bolsters on the on the side of a seat of a sports car uh, are just a little bit too much um, as far as squeezing you or holding you too much in place. These seats are very comfortable, as in they do hold they do give you support, but they're not really intrusive on you like some of the other. Um, uh, bolsters I've seen in vehicles all right up here is your rear view mirror and I'm not sure why my camera doesn't want to cooperate okay there we go now we've got your garage door opener controls there and you do have an auto dim feature there 
to where um, if, a, if a vehicle's behind you, you can turn it on and off, but there's a little light sensor here, and when the vehicle's behind you with the bright lights, it will dim the rear view mirror, and that way you don't get uh, blinded. Now, the chances of somebody being behind you, um, close to you anyway, and not disappearing in the distance in the GTR, uh, them being right on your tail is probably very uh, unlikely. <laughs> All right, so up here, we've got a place to put your sunglasses in the little pocket and it is like a, a felt line inside it's kind of like feels like a pool table felt inside the um, inside the, this container and you've got your controls here for your interior lights you can have the door off or on and that way you can do that this little thing right here I believe that is for the Bluetooth speak uh, microphone if I'm not mistaken do have a, a speaker there in the dash and uh, the, the ceiling um, the, in, the headliner is like a real um, is like a cloth black cloth feel let's see here let's see what the rear view mirror looks like I'm sorry the uh, the visor it does have a mirror with a light in the visor so you can see that The other side looks like pretty much the same thing all right so I know you've waited long enough so the um, well let me I was gonna say let's look at the engine but this disclaimer let's check this out real fast because this is very interesting I've never seen this in any vehicle before um, this is customer information and disclosure form Called a discla disclaimer, but I guess it's more of a disclosure. So I don't know if there's a difference. So check it out. Use the pause button if you want. And I noticed um, recommended to drive with the VDC on at all times, uh, except for when stuck. There's no reason to be driving without it. Um, and also, it will avoid your warranty if you're driving around without, I guess, doing donuts or whatever. Um, so, special synthetic oil um, from the transfer case and the transmission. Um, it, has, it says plasma sprayed bores. Um, so you have to use a specific synthetic oil, uh, special brake fluid. Um, uh, it's just amazing how much uh, you know uniqueness this vehicle has. It's specifically designed for a lot of stuff. But anyways, I thought this was amazing. Um, I can sit there and look at it all day. But now it's time to look in, look under the hood and check out the awesome engine. turbo v6 3.8 liter unbelievable the amount of power that this engine has here 
545 horsepower, 463 pound-feet of torque. And once again, feel free to use the pause button. All right, there you have it. Um, and I'm sure I've missed a whole bunch of stuff, so if you can please fill me in and fill in the rest of the world with anything that I might have missed. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much to Grand Strand Nissan for allowing me to, to look at this vehicle and check it out and share it with all you. And also, I just want to mention, um, I'd really appreciate it if you would help me, uh, help support my channel. I'm trying to increase the quality, frequency, and uh, variety on my channel as much as possible. So any support from you guys, I'd really appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. I need to get a bumper sticker from my car that says, when I grow up, I want to be a GTR.